So today we're going to do a quick, easy primer on software design fundamentals. Now, this is going to be a very short video and it's going to have a few items in it, but it's going to help give you some breadcrumbs to look in the right way. I just did a quick search and what I found was a lot of advertising and people trying to sell a product, uh, a boot camp, a framework that was, you know, a copy of an open source thing or something to that effect. Basically, these are people trying to take advantage of you because they know that you don't know enough to actually learn this stuff based on the fact that you're, you're actually searching for system design stuff when you haven't learned the fundamentals because this is the kind of search that somebody would make when they haven't put the work in already on the prior stuff. Yeah, I said it. You're here because you got to the video because you were looking for system design stuff. But the fact is the way that you search for system design stuff is showing me and others that you actively don't know what you're doing. Well, guess what? I'm here to help you anyway. So first thing you should do is ask yourself questions, not make statements. The fact is a lot of these so-called uh, system design frameworks and these fundamentals that they're trying to teach you can come from the wrong place. The fact is you should be asking questions of why the system should exist and how it should exist, not how to build it. The fact is, if you already know the questions of why you're building it and what the value is to customers, then those other questions of how to build it already fall into place. The fact that you're asking these questions and, and trying to figure out how to build the system tells me that you haven't done the requisite planning to figure out what things actually need to be built. And so the thing, next thing you have to ask yourself is, you know, don't dive code without planning first. The fact is you should not be diving into code first thing. The fact that you're doing these searches online for how to do the code and you haven't done the requisite planning is pointing out why you're failing. The fact is, if you're a software development engineer or an architect of any kind, your job is not just to write code. It's also to plan things out and create a plan so that you don't fail. Because remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so as a result of that, don't get yourself in over your head. Just do the work that's required, even if it's boring, because guess what? When things are stable and boring, those are the best days that a software development engineer can have, because that means you didn't mess, make a mistake. You didn't mess up. You don't have a system that's down. You don't have a customer that's angry. Okay, it means you did your job. So do your job, okay? Now, that means you gotta spend the first third of your time planning, okay? First third of your time planning. Now, your business, your program management, whatever, those people are probably doing a lot of planning before it adds up to your plate if you're a more junior person. And so as a result of this, you're not gonna see all that planning, which means you're not gonna benefit from it. So you need to talk to these people. You need to get all that data in your head. You need to understand the customer because that's what's going to drive everything else. You need to understand the people that are actually going to be using your software because if you can do that, all these other questions will just fall into place because your job is to provide value to the customer. It's not about having the system not be used by anybody. And if humans aren't using this system, then what value do you actually provide? Okay. This means you need to go through the entire system. You need to make sure you use the software development life cycle. And you need to make sure that you actually understand it. If you don't, go learn that. Okay. That also means that you need to understand the basics. Trying to design a big, complicated system without learning the fundamentals first is exactly what got you to this video. The algorithm said, wait, this person's looking for something more advanced. Maybe they don't know it. So we're gonna give them Dwayne's video because it, he talks about the basics and will set them up for success. So here I am, here you are, listen to me, okay? Learn about dry and solid. If you don't know what these are, you're going to fail. These are not just things that you learn as a software development engineer. They are concepts that will help you manage complexity and be more successful in the future. Don't let yourself become inefficient or have low quality code where you repeat yourself endlessly doing the same thing because you don't understand these two topics, okay? 
at the end of the day, these are all about problem solving. You need to have problem solving skills. Okay, these are the things that you learn as a software development engineer, because at the end of the day, you're just communicating with the world, writing code in the language of the business's choice, whether it's C sharp, Java, Python, whatever. You are translating the English problem into a software solution. Okay? Your job is to translate and communicate and teach these computers to do the work that need to be done. But you can't do that if you don't understand the problem and you haven't asked the customer. So most importantly, talk to your customers. The business can have their own ideas and that's fine. You should be aligned with the business goals. The fact is, if you don't understand how people are going to judge the system or why they need this system or the pain that this system kills, you're not gonna be fully aligned to the business goals and you're not gonna be able to make your customers happy. So do that, talk to your customers because software was built to be used by humans. And if nobody's using your software, what value is it? The fact is, there are so many industry standards that we could go into here in this short little video, and it would take forever. But the fact is, unless you're willing to put the work in and learn some of the basics first, they're not going to be useful to you. So take some of the concepts in this video, learn what you can. Remember, like and subscribe, ring the bell so I can help you more.